What's up, guys? Carolina Jackpot coming at you on Monday evening. It's time to grade the picks against the spread from week number 12. Uh, just getting around to doing that. If you'll remember, going into week number 12, if you've been watching and keeping up, uh, Carolina Jackpot was 95, 93, and 2 through uh, 11 weeks of action. That is two games over uh, 500 with two pushes. Now, after I graded them last week, I came back with 94, 94, and 2. But uh, someone did um, point out to me in the comment section that I had graded one of my wins uh, as a loss. So that's why uh, the discrepancy there uh, with the one game. So Carolina Jackpot, it was actually uh, two games over 500. Let's see if we can keep that up uh, through week 12. All right. Just checking these out from last Friday night. I had Syracuse covering the spread against Louisville, and they didn't. Syracuse actually got shut out 30-0 to zero by Louisville. Who would think Louisville could pitch a shutout against somebody? And that somebody was Syracuse. Uh, Purdue at Minnesota. Minnesota was two-and-a-half point underdog at home, and they did cover that spread. They won 34-31. Um, good, good win there by the uh, Minnesota Golden Gophers, a lot of Purdue people, a lot of people just in the college football world in general crying because uh, Purdue got a, a pass interference call uh, at, you know, with like 30 seconds left in the game when they scored an apparent touchdown pass to the tight end. Um, I will give it to you. Uh, that was not pass interference. But, I mean, Purdue had chances to win or tie that game earlier on. They, they missed a chip shot field goal. And they had some other stuff, too. So, you know, you can't – people like to try to blame stuff on, on these one play. But that's why I lost. But it, it's not. I and mean, they had they had other opportunities to win that game. Uh, Florida and Vanderbilt. Uh, Florida beat Vanderbilt 38-17. Struggled with them a little bit. So, that pick was correct. Uh, App State at Coastal. I had Coastal covering. I hadn't shown them a lot of love this year. Uh, but they won 34-23 over App State, so they covered the spread there. Uh, Tennessee at Auburn. Uh, Auburn wins that game 30-17 over Tennessee, so they covered the 11-point spread. Uh, there was one canceled there before I ever even made the picks. Uh, the Clemson-Florida State game, uh, that one was canceled uh, LSU and Arkansas, uh, LSU actually won that game 27-24, uh, I believe was the final score there. So they uh, did, in fact, uh, cover that spread. And uh, I did not get that pick correct. Arkansas didn't cover uh, the number. Uh, moving along to page number two, uh, East Carolina and Temple. Uh, Temple was catching three and a half at home, and I had picked East Carolina to cover that spread, and they did. They won 28-3. to uh, Georgia Southern and Army. Uh, Army wins, but only 28-27. So that one was incorrect. In Indiana and Ohio State, uh, 20 and a half points. Ohio State was laying at home, and they do win 42-35. Uh, so that pick is correct. Uh, Indiana did cover. Uh, Illinois at Nebraska. Um, no, uh, Nebraska does not cover. Uh, they got uh, actually blown out. Well, not blown out, but they got beat. 41-23 by Illinois at home. Uh, Cincinnati and UCF. Uh, another pick I got wrong there. Cincinnati wins that one 36-33 against uh, UCF, so they didn't cover the six points. Uh, Iowa and Penn State. I had Penn State there, uh, and uh, they didn't cover either. They're 0 and 4 now. They are 0 and 5. They lost 41 21. Uh, Wisconsin and uh, Northwestern. I I picked Wisconsin to cover the spread here. I don't know why I did that because I picked Northwestern. Um, actually, well, actually bet real money on it. I picked Northwestern actually on the money line and won myself like $75 or something. So, yeah, that pick was wrong. Um, UCLA and Oregon, uh, eh, that one was wrong too. Jack Pop, what's wrong with you here? Cal at the Beave. The Beave covered that spread. They win 31-27, so they come through for me again. They came, I put money on them too. 
and they came through for me there. Nice. Um, K State, Iowa State. Oh, man. I got rocked on that one. Kansas State looked awful. 45-0, uh, they lost. I, I would not have picked them uh, had I known. They had a lot of coronavirus issues, a lot. So I, I probably wouldn't have picked them had I known that. But, you know, I'll say hindsight's 2020, I guess. Virginia Tech and Pitt. Pitt wins 47-14 to 14 over blew out Virginia Tech. You see that coming. Kentucky and Alabama, that was correct. Uh, Alabama won 63-3 to over Kentucky. Now, that's a big win. I mean, you, you, you put 63 points up against anybody in SEC play. That's a big win. Um, and Kentucky, I mean, they're, they're known for having a decent defense. Um, so, I mean, I thought that game would have been 40-something to like 42-7 or something maybe. But that's um, that was just a bloodletting. Uh, Mizzou and South Carolina. Mizzou wins 17-10. Don't even want to talk about that one. Uh, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Huh. Oh, wow. Oklahoma just Oklahoma blew them out. 41-13. Uh, Liberty and North Carolina State. Uh, NC State. Let's see. NC State wins 15-14. 15-14. So I actually got that pick correct. Um, well, they were three and a half point favorites uh, going in. Um, that's kind of surprising to me. Liberty couldn't pull that one out. But uh, that Cinderella story had to come to an end sometime, right? Mississippi State and Georgia. Mississippi State covered that one. They also won me a little bit of money. They 31 24. Georgia wins over Mississippi State. Uh, they finally have a quarterback. Um, this guy will probably win the Heisman the next two years um, and a couple of national titles. Michigan, 48-42 uh, over Rutgers. So Rutgers covered the spread there, and uh, they almost won me some money too. God, they were very, very close to uh, to winning me some money. Um, God, just could not, just couldn't keep Michigan out of the damn end zone. They just couldn't do it. They had they had them beat too. I mean, they were down like seventeen nothing at one point, and they just let them come back. Uh, USC and Utah. Well, USC blows Utah out, thirty three seventeen win by the uh, Trojans. So that pick was correct. And then the final one where I had Washington State covered against St Stanford. Stanford. No need to stutter it. <laughs> that game was uh, canceled. Yeah, so let's see how uh, Jackpot end up doing here uh, against the numbers. I think it looks like I'm about 50%, maybe. Let's see. We are 0-1, 1-1, 2-1, 3-1, 4-1, 5-1, 6-1, 7-1, 8-1, 9-1, 10-1, 11-1, 12-1, 13-1, 14-1, 15-1, 16-1, 17-1, 18-1, 19-1, 
being as I grade these things live, I mean, I don't really have a lot of time to, I don't do them beforehand, so I don't have a chance to get back to that. All right, so Carolina Jackpots, uh, through 12 weeks, my cumulative, 109, 103, and two uh, against the spread. Not bad, you know, not bad. I spent when I've picked uh, well over 200 games here, uh, a lot of which have been canceled. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's not bad. Uh, one could argue, so, well, you, you you know, you should just pick, like, five games and just see, you know, what you can do because you can't. Well, well, you know, that's fun. I like trying to uh, to uh, figure all these out. And uh, I'm doing better uh, more often than not. So uh, there's that. Now, for our as you know, when we do the uh, picks against the spread, Carolina Jackpot has a, boy, you nailed it pick of the week. He has a, you should have known better pick of the week. And he has a, a turd of the week. So just looking at this, uh, my boy, you sure nailed it pick of the week would have to be, uh, let's see. I'd have to go with Vanderbilt uh, covering against Florida. I think a lot of people were all over Florida's nuts. Uh, and with good reason. They've been playing pretty well um, of late. And uh, Kyle Trask has just looked amazing. Uh, but I knew that, uh, that Vanderbilt's played Florida rather tough. Vanderbilt's been improving. And also, uh, Kyle Pitts wasn't going to play this game either. So I had a feeling that Vanderbilt would give them a tough time uh, and they certainly did. So I would take that as the uh, that one as the you nailed it pick of the week because a lot of people were all over Florida in that one, and uh, that one just did not come to be. The uh, man you should have known better pick of the week. Uh, well, I would guess I would have to go with Wisconsin here, um, covering against Northwestern. I don't know why I picked that. Uh, they. They're like one and five uh, in their last six meetings or last six trips to uh, the big city of Evanston, Illinois. So, yeah, now they're well, one and six. And I don't know why I actually picked them here and, uh, you know, just messing with the real money. I actually picked the correct team. So I don't get that one. And um, the turn of the week, the <sighs> I can't pick the Gamecocks anymore because, I mean, they're they're just dead. Um, they're done. Uh, the turd of the week has to be Florida State. Florida State is the turd of the week. And make no mistake about it, I will take every uh, opportunity that I can uh, to be smirch and make fun of Dabo Sweeney, uh, the Clemson football program. You know, he's whining, has his little rant. Uh, in his old call-in show about, oh, well, you know, uh, this game wasn't canceled, uh, wasn't canceled, uh, due to COVID. Uh, they didn't want to play, they didn't want to play, uh, due to COVID. It was canceled, whatever he said. You, you heard the thing. He, uh, basically called out Florida State and said that they were, uh, scared to play his team and it was a bitch move. Well, you know what? He's right. He's right. Uh, it was a bitch move by them. I mean, they let them get all the way down there, first of all. Uh, let, you know, how much does, does transportation like that cost? Like half a million dollars to bring the entire football team down there? And you got to space them out. So it's got to be social distance. So they probably took two planes and um, probably took a couple of extra buses to uh, take them back and forth to, uh, from the hotel to uh, – wherever they were practicing at, from there to the stadium. I mean, it's just nuts. It's nuts. And they called the damn game off two hours before it was supposed to kick off. Um, when the, the Taters offered to play the game on uh, Saturday night after they tested them again. They offered to play it on Sunday or Monday, and they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't have they wouldn't have none of it. So, you know, they were scared. I mean, they were scared. They didn't want to get their ass whipped. I mean, I get it. I get it. You didn't want to get your ass whipped. But here's my thing. Your players, I think your players wanted to play that game. They wanted to play the game. And they wasn't intent on getting their ass whipped. I mean, look at the last three times that they've played uh, or that Clemson's played this year. I mean, they uh, rode the struggle bus against Syracuse and Boston College, and then they lost. I mean, why would your players be scared to play them? They wouldn't. You were just trying to protect your image. You are trying to protect your image. You didn't want to get uh, the holy hell beat out of you. Uh, and, 
Now, that's basically all that boils down to. The thing is, you probably wouldn't have. Probably wouldn't have. I mean, you'd have got beat, yeah. But it, it wasn't going to be It wasn't gonna be as bad as that administration that I was letting it on to be. Huh? Because Clemson was rusty. Hadn't played in like two weeks. Right? I don't know. That That's my turn of the week. But the thing about it is, about Dabo, Dabo, you can't say everything that you want to say. You can't say whatever just pops into your head just because it pops into your head. Even though you're right. Even though you're right, you just can't voice it the way that you do. You have to make a more coach speak, a more politically correct type statement. Period. Period. Period! Sorry, that was a little Uncle Lou reference there. Period. You have to, you have to, uh, Tone yourself down a little bit, sir. But Florida State still turn of the week. Um, you, you should have played that game. Shame on you, Florida State. Uh, you were you were in the toilet. Anyway, uh, that's it. That wraps up picks against the spread for uh, week number twelve. Picks against the spread for week number thirteen. Uh, we'll be coming up in the next couple of days. Make sure you're subscribed to Carolina Jackpot's channel. If you are not already, click the little bell on there so you get notified whenever Carolina Jackpot drops a new college football video or on the event that Carolina Jackpot goes live. You definitely don't want to miss the live ones because the live ones are the good ones. That's where the good shit happens. I'll see y'all later. Appreciate it. Peace. And I'm out. Go Gamecocks. Feels great to not have to say fire boom anymore. Woo! I said, woo!